Tonight, we're talking about zeroing red dots, specifically the hollow sun. Are you ready? Stand by. So we talk about red dots a lot here on the channel, but we've never really talked about sighting them. And there's a lot of videos out here about how you should zero in your gun. And what kind of YouTuber would I be if I didn't at least throw my hat in the ring? So here we are. So I get asked a good amount. What distance do I zero my red dots at? And on my gaming guns, the answer is about 15 yards. However, I have zeroed at 10, I've zeroed at 12, I've zeroed at 15, 20, and 25 yards. There's not a huge difference in most handgun ranges. But zeroing at 25 yards is going to expose errors with your zero in a way that closer ranges don't really. So I decided to use that for this video and change the zero from this from about 12 yards to 25 yards. The problem with shooting at 25 yards is it is hard, especially if you're trying to shoot offhand. It's very difficult to zero a gun at that distance. So I used the Caldwell Pistolero Pistol Rest, which does a fantastic job stabilizing the gun so you can shoot an accurate group. But before you start shooting, you need to pick a target that makes sense to your eye. Now when I shoot, I have decent enough vision to where I can see a single black paster on my typical USPSA cardboard targets. So I'll put four or five black pasters on there and I will shoot about three shot groups when I know I have three good shots that I can see went exactly where the dot was sighted, that's when I back it away. If I can see the dot move prior to the trigger going off and the dot lifting and recoil, then I know that that shot was no good and I discard it as far as grouping purposes are concerned. So firing three good shots, I'll go down range and examine my work. Now the way the adjustments work on a red dot is each click is going to be one inch at 100 yards. Through the power of mathematics, we know at 25 yards, each one of those clicks is going to move the impact about a quarter of an inch. So if the impacts like they were on my first group were left of the target, that means I'm gonna to need to dial in some right. So I think I dialed in six clicks of right and two clicks of up to get the dot zeroed. I fired another group to confirm and the elevation was wrong. So I ended up adjusting the elevation back down a few clicks. And fired a third group to confirm. All in, I shot about 12 rounds through the gun to get it zeroed at 25 yards, working from a good zero at about 12 yards. Now, as far as using a rest is concerned, with the Pistolero, you move the base pad to support the gun so the gun rests on the base pad. You then raise the upright so that the gun is supported, roughly aimed at the target, and then you use your hands to sort of fine tune it. Uh, if you rest your elbows on the bench, that is gonna help st stabilize you as well, so I would recommend doing that. And then it becomes an exercise in pulling the trigger straight to the rear. So you're not actually gonna pull the trigger, you're just gonna move it backwards. And eventually, as you keep adding pressure, it's gonna release and it's gonna be a surprise. You are going for the surprise break. This is not like when you see the dot exactly where you want it and you just yank the trigger and get after it. No, you just start aiming, get it aimed really, really well, and then realize the dot is gonna move as you pull the trigger, then just start building pressure on the trigger, moving slowly to the rear, just observing what the dot's doing, and it is gonna move around a little bit, and that's okay, but you're trying to pull it straight to the rear until eventually, there it is. So that was the whole trigger pull sequence. It may take me 10 to 15 seconds to pull through the trigger, when I'm shooting groups to try and be accurate. So if you're not doing that, I would ask that you give it a try. If you want a Pistolero brace, you can see where they are on Amazon. There's a link in the description. And if you made it this far, I'd appreciate the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And check out the description for links to some pretty cool stuff and my Patreon page where you can support me and get access to my blog, as well as a sneak peek of what's coming down the pipe. As always, I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, guys.